Get ready for some rapid fire tips and tricks for how to use Adobe After Effects. With After Effects, you can create cinematic film titles, intros, and transitions, add exciting special effects, and more. In this video, we'll take you through 26 essential tutorials, tools, hacks, and settings going from A to Z. For all the featured images and resources, check out Envato Elements. With just one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as graphics, video templates, and fonts. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. And you can cancel at any time. So subscribe now with the link in the description below. So now let's get started with the A to Z of Adobe After Effects. A is for animation presets. Animating things is the bread and butter of After Effects. There's just so much you can do that might seem a little bit overwhelming for beginners. However, with built-in animation presets, making things move just couldn't be easier. To access these, simply go to the Effects and Presets panel on the right side of the screen here. If it's not available, you can access it from the Window menu. Just simply go to Window and then select Effects and Presets. From there, we want to go and open the Animation Presets option at the top here. And then straight away, you'll be able to see all the different options that are available. For example, let's go ahead and make this text move by going over to the text folder here and opening it up. And now you can see all the different types of animations that we can use to animate our text, such as the Animate In and the Animate Out options here. So let's go ahead and select Animate In. And again, now we've got some more options here. And all we have to do to apply it is to just click, click and drag the animation onto our text to apply it. And now if we press the play preview button, you can see how that animates our text. Try out different options to see what text animation that you like. B is for blur and sharpen. Access all the Blur and Sharpen effects from the Effects and Presets panel here. And then once we've opened it up, all we have to do is click and drag it into the composition. So let's go ahead and choose Gaussian Blur. Click and drag it onto our layer to apply it like so. And then experiment with the different options in the Effects Controls panel here. So we can increase the blurriness like this, and you can see how that affects the blurriness of our image. And we can also affect the blur dimension, so we can change it from horizontal and vertical to just horizontal, like so. And if we increase the blurriness, you can see how that's only affecting the horizontal blurs, or from vertical. C is for composition. A composition is basically a container that stores all the layers of your animation or video. To create a composition, go to Composition and select New Composition. Adjust the settings of your composition such as size, frame rate and duration and then click OK. From here we can add assets into our composition by just clicking and dragging it in like so. D is for Drop Shadow. To apply a drop shadow effect to our logo here, all we need to do is go to the Effects and Presets panel and then type in the search bar here, Drop Shadow. So just click and drag it onto our logo layer. You can then adjust the way that your drop shadow looks by going over to the Effect Controls panel here and then changing the options such as the color, the opacity, the direction here and also the distance to increase the visibility of our drop shadow as well as the softness. E is for the eyedropper tool. To change the color of your text quickly and easily simply select the text that you want to change. Go to the character panel here you'll see the eyedropper icon. Click on that and then simply click and select any color that's displayed on your screen 
such as the background here or even a color on your panel such as this white here. F is for frame rate. The frame rate of a video is measured by the number of frames played back each second and we can choose what FPS we can use in our composition by going to the composition settings here and then choosing a number for our frame rate. G is for glow. To add a glow effect, select the object that you want to add this effect to, go to the effect and presets menu, and in the search bar, type in glow. From there, simply click and drag the glow effect onto your image, like so, to add it. You can then adjust the way that it looks by going to the effect controls panel at the top here and changing the options, such as the radius, like so. H is for the hand tool. The hand tool allows you to grab your composition and move around it. This can be useful when you're zoomed in and you need to move around the space quickly. Select it from the top menu bar here or simply press and hold the space bar on your keyboard. I is for importing files. To import files such as images, videos or audio, you need to go to File, Import, File, and then from here, you can choose to import a single file or multiple files. J is for Control J. With a more complex composition, sometimes you may need to reduce the resolution in order to improve the performance. Pressing Control Shift J on the keyboard will reduce the resolution by half, indicated by the drop down box here and then pressing Ctrl J will reduce the resolution back to full. K is for keyframes. Keyframes are the time markers that allow you to tell After Effects where you want some sort of change to occur, such as a simple transformation property like position, opacity, scale, and rotation. So let's take a look at this logo layer here and how we can create a keyframe to transform it. So we've opened up our logo layer and under transform you can see we've got position, scale, rotation and opacity. If we scrub to the beginning of our timeline, we can create a keyframe for opacity by clicking on the stopwatch icon here and you'll see that there's a small little keyframe indicating where our opacity will begin. And if we move forwards a few seconds into our timeline like so, we can change the opacity value to something like zero to fade it out. And now you'll see as we scrub backwards and forwards into our timeline, you'll see in between the two keyframes, we have a nice fading in and fading out animation for our logo. L is for layers. Whenever we introduce something new into our comp, it's placed inside it as a layer. There are many different types of layers that we can add and we can easily identify each of these types via the small icon next to it. So here we have a shape layer indicated by the star, a text layer indicated by the T and so on. M is for motion blur. You can apply motion blur to your animated layers by expanding your layer options at the bottom here and then first you need to activate motion blur by clicking on the enable motion blurs button here and then navigate to the layers that you want to apply motion blur to and then clicking on the motion blur icon over here. N is for null object. A null object is an invisible layer that you can create to become a parent of something. This can be useful if we have a composition with multiple layers and we want to move everything at the same time. First, we need to create a null object by going to layer, new, and then select null object. And then from here, we want to use the parent and link column to link all of these layers into our null object. So selecting all of the layers here, go to the drop down menu here and then select a null as our parent. And then whenever we move our null object, everything will be moved at the same time. O is for opacity. 
You can easily animate the opacity of a layer to create some simple transitions by simply going into the transform options, going to opacity, and then click on the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe. So let's move over to about two seconds here, create a keyframe like so. Move forward in the time frame about one second, and then change the opacity value from 100 to zero. And now you'll see that we've created a nice opacity transition, like so. P is for the pick whip. The pick whip is a quick and easy way to attach one layer to another. If you wanted to attach a layer to a parent layer, such as the null object that we showed earlier, simply click on the pick whip like this, and then click and drag it to the layer that you want to parent it to, like so. Q is for the shortcut Q. Activate and cycle through the shape tools, which are located on the top menu bar here by pressing key on the keyboard. This will cycle through all the different shapes, such as the star, the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, the ellipse, the polygon, and back to the star again. R is for the rotate tool. To rotate an object, select the rotate tool from the top menu bar here or press W on the keyboard, hover over the image that you want to rotate, and then use the mouse to click and drag to rotate the image, like so. S is for shape layers. Shape layers are 2D flat objects created either manually by the user using the pen tool or with a predetermined shape using the shape tool, such as a rectangle, oval, or a star. T is for time remapping. Time remapping is an extremely useful feature that allows you to manipulate the timing of your footage. To access it, select your footage, and then go to layer, time, and enable time remapping. This will automatically place keyframes at the beginning and at the end of your layer. One for when your footage will start and one for when your footage ends. By moving either one of these keyframes, you'll determine when the footage will start and when it will end. So you can see here, now that I've changed it to 12 seconds, our footage will stop at 12 seconds. And we can also change it here. So our footage will start just after two seconds in our timeline, like so. Essentially making our video a little bit faster. U is for unsharp mask. The unsharp mask effect increases the contrast between colors that define an edge. Let's take this image as an example and apply the unsharp mask to it by going to our effects and presets panel here and typing in unsharp mask, click and drag it onto our image. And then over in the effect controls panel, we can adjust the way that it looks by adjusting the amount, the radius, and also the threshold. So if we crank this all the way up so you can see how this affects the image. Now with the threshold, the lower the value, the greater the results. So we want to leave it at zero, like so. V is for vibrance. You can easily increase the vibrance and saturation of your image in After Effects. Just select the layer that you want to adjust and then go to Effect, Color Correction, and then select Vibrance. Now over in the Effects Controls panel here, you can increase the Vibrance, which will increase the intensity of the more muted colors whilst leaving the saturated colors alone, or increase the saturation, bumping up the intensity of all the colors. W is for Workspace. What you see on the screen now and the positioning of all the panels is called a workspace. After Effects comes equipped with some ready-made preset workspaces that you can use. Simply go to Window, and then go to Workspace, 
and then choose from the type of workspace that is most suited to the project that you're working on, such as animation, or if we go back to workspace, color. X is for XYZ rotation. In After Effects, you can make additional transform options by making a layer a 3D layer. Expand the layer options at the bottom here, if it isn't already, and then click on the 3D box next to your layer, like so. And then automatically, if we go down the transform options, you'll see we've got X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. So you can see if we adjust these, our layer can now be transformed on a 3D plane. Y is for the shortcut Y key. The shortcut key Y is to activate the anchor point tool. This is perfect if you wanted to change the pivot point of an image. Press Y on the keyboard and then click and drag the anchor point to wherever you want to place it. And then press W on the keyboard to rotate it along that new anchor point, like so. Z is for the zoom tool. Pressing Z on the keyboard will activate the zoom tool. And once you see the mouse cursor change, simply click on the image to zoom in, like so. So that's it for this video. If you liked it and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified of any more new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of our other excellent tutorials that we have on offer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.